If you're looking for comfort or reassurance, I can assure you that there's none here. Um, you know, go and listen to Eckhart Tolle or something if you want those kind of things. Uh, these are five inconvenient facts that uh, are features of our lives. And uh, they're not, well, for many people, they're not pleasant to contemplate. So let's get on to them. I've given you the warning. Uh, you die. That's the elephant in the room. Most people would rather not look at it and pretend it's not there. Uh, but when you die, clearly your body dies, uh, your mind dies, all your memories go, all your imagination, your emotions, your desires, your physical sensations, everything goes. Uh, the B Buddhists talk about the five aggregates, uh, which covers most of those things, but also the fifth aggregate is consciousness, which also goes when your body dies. There are plenty of people out there trying to tell us that uh, something persists or that we have some deeper level of existence. Uh, if you've experienced that, then you are wiser than 99% of uh, everybody else out there. But uh, I've not experienced anything other than when I go to sleep at night, and particularly in deep dreamless sleep, my consciousness goes. I have no awareness of the body, no awareness of mind. Basically, for all intents and purposes, I don't exist. So you experience this oblivion that is death every night. Of course, we're not 100% sure of that, but the evidence, at least, points in that direction. If that's something that you mourn, then you need to read Seneca. Because as he says, death is actually your freedom. And if you um, are afraid of death or don't like the idea of it, it's because you are hanging on to life. Which is a folly, of course, because life is a temporary thing. So, number two. You have no self. The feeling of having a self is nature's greatest... Um, triumph because all creatures have a sense an instinctive sense of wanting to survive but this idea of having a self of being someone is nature's crowning glory because it makes us strive even harder to continue with our existence so you know, your body not not only has the instinctive drive to survive but you have a psychological drive to survive in terms of preserving yourself as a person. The idea that you're a person is an illusion, but it's, as I've said, a great triumph of nature to get us to work harder to survive. So, number three, life is decay. Um, Heraclitus said, uh, life is not life, life is death. And all around you, all you see actually is decay. Everything around you, every living thing, is dying. Um, so, that's not a thought people like to entertain, but that's the reality of it. From the moment you're conceived through to the moment you die, your life has been one long process of decay. All life really requires from you is that you live long enough to procreate and rear your, your offspring. Uh, beyond that, life isn't really interested in you. So, life is decay, and um, the decay happens at a sufficiently slow rate so that you can procreate and uh, continue, uh, or help continue the species. Number four, which is that your pains will be more frequent and more intense than your pleasures. You don't have to think about this particularly hard to realize that it's true. Uh, for you to be in pleasure as... Um, Epicurus said, you have to be free of pain. Uh, the problem is, of course, that, so for example, if you've got toothache, everything else in your life may be going really well. You might have a new lover, you might have uh, got a promotion at work, you might have just bought yourself a new house, and you know, whatever, all the things that might bring you pleasure. But if you've got toothache, then all of that pleasure means nothing, because you're in pain. Or as... Um, uh, Schopenhauer says, the pinching shoe, everything may be fine in your life, but if your shoe is pinching, then you will be in pain. 
the times when you are completely free of pain are very rare. So your pleasures will be rather less uh, frequent. And what is more, the pains are usually more intense. So, pains, you lose someone that you love, you get uh, some horrible disease, you, know, uh, you have financial difficulties, any, any number of things like that. And your pleasures, what are they? Well, you get a pay increase or um, you go on a nice holiday. The pleasures are really quite trivial compared with the pains that you might experience in life. And finally, number five, this is it. Don't go looking for a spiritual dimension. Don't go looking for a savior or some kind of um, salvation. There isn't any. This is it. If you cannot live life as it is presented to you, then you're in, you're, you're in trouble. Uh, and trying to escape into the world of spiritual woo-woo or uh, religious belief is only going to make matters worse because the basic dynamic of uh, spiritual traditions and religion is that they cause you to hope. Well, on the other side of hope is fear. Uh, so, as you increase your hopes, so you increase your fears. So, if you can just live life as it is, and that is very difficult, you know, making these things sound trivial, they're not trivial. Uh, if you can live life as it is, chop wood and carry water, as the Buddhists would say, then um, life becomes somewhat more tolerable. And in fact, you can get to the point where life really doesn't mean all that much to you. And at that point, you really are free. So you need to become completely free of hope. And when you're completely free of hope, you'll be completely free of fear. And when you're free of fear, then you are free. So this is it. Don't indulge in any fantasies.